All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Monday episode of Student of the Gun Radio. What are we going to do today? What are we going to talk about? Thank you for asking. We're going to talk about body armor. I'll give you some recommendations about armor. And then we're going to reference something that I know that everyone, well, everybody except for Gen Z people probably, uh, ask not what your country can do for you. Where did that come from? From where did that originate? Where did it come? And the speech was more than just that one line. And we're going to get into, well, whatever else it is we want to talk about because we can. All right. I got Jared with me. Jared is with me live via satellite. Hello, everybody. I am here from the uh, warm and humid Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Yep. And uh, Zach is not here right now. Uh, well, he's here, but he's not here. So just don't worry about it. We got it under control. Make, make sure we <laughs> apologize to Zach in advance for what he has to do with this episode. That's right. <laughs> all right. So we're going to talk about all of that and more here on today's episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Stand by for education, enlightenment, enjoyment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I think without further ado, I mean, number one, if you're listening live on Discord right now, uh, great. Uh, if you're not on Discord, if you're listening to this Monday and you're like, what is this Discord thing? What is that all about? Well, it's a thing that you kids use out there uh, to communicate. So if you want to follow us on Discord, you can follow the show live and you can ask questions. And then if we get to it, if we have the opportunity to get to it, we'll give you an answer live on the radio. I know it's pretty cool, right? Yep, true story. True if you want to join the Discord, you go to studentofthegun.com slash Discord. It'll take you directly to the server, and you can get joined up there. The access to the server is completely free. You don't have to be a grad program member to get access. And but, uh, there are specific sections of the server that grad program has access to. That is true. That is true. Now, Facebook is – we're probably not long for Facebook um, – because what what they're doing is they're basically they're they're allowing us to be there, but they're making it so that it's almost pointless. We have a hundred and five thousand people following us on Facebook, and we'll put up a post. We Zach put up a post on uh, Friday, reminding people about the sales that we had going on the store. And according to the Nazis at Facebook, four hundred and sixty nine people saw the post. So out of 105,000 people that follow us, less than 500 saw the post. That's insane. Yeah. And you know what's funny? What's the, that? Uh, our parlor account has 391 followers, and I see that a post that we put up 22 hours ago has 300 views, which is 75, um, uh, 77 almost percent, percent view yeah. rate. So if you want to follow us and, and get information, if you want to get off of Facebook, I think most people are. It's just, it's just, it's just a matter of time. Uh, go sign up on Parler, P-A-R-L-E-R. It's Student of the Gun Show or Student of the Gun. What, what is our thing called? Student of the Gun. It, it's at Student of the Gun LLC on LLC. there. LLC, okay, yeah. Somebody sniped our at Student of the Gun. <laughs> Some, so if you're listening and you sniped our at Student of the Gun, so, I'm sure you are a student of the gun, but if you would be willing, we would love our name back. Some airsoft paintball kid snatched our, our moniker before we got there. So shame on us. So that that is a thing. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, we do have a SWAT Fuel Warrior of the Week question uh, this week, and we're going to go ahead and dive into that. All right, SWAT Fuel Warrior of the Week brought to you by me uh, and SWAT Fuel. <laughs> uh, if you go to SWATFuel.com, they have 9mm plus P in stock. Uh, you guys all know that story. We're not going to repeat it again. If you'd like to be the Warrior of the Week, you can call 
207-768-2078-207-7684. Or you can do what this week's caller slash questioner did, and they didn't call, they actually emailed. And Jared's going to read that right now. The question is from Brian Cooper, and he said, what are the recommendations on level of body armor protection? Is level three enough, or should someone look to get more than that? All right. Body armor, body armor, body armor. I just wrote an article about body armor published on November 17th, 2020 on the Student of the Gun website. And if you go there and you read, it's I think it's the latest article or the last article we put up. Uh, here's the main the main thing you need to understand with body armor is there's two two categories there's two basic categories uh, there's concealable and then there's overt uh, overt is what everybody knows today because it's super cool and Gucci everybody knows what a plate carrier is right a plate carrier is a plate carrier and, and you put you put patches on it and uh, you know it's got Molly on it and you put all that stuff on it. That is overt. Covert is concealable. It's something you wear underneath your normal clothing. And when it comes to concealable, generally what you will have is either a level 2 or 3A or 2A, uh, but it is flexible. Uh, the most popular material, there's more than just Kevlar, but the most popular material is Kevlar or a hybrid Kevlar or whatever. And that goes under your shirt. You just wear your normal clothes. And most people don't realize that you're wearing it unless you're wearing a skin-tight T-shirt and people see the straps or whatever. Now, the other one is external. Now, generally, when we're talking about concealable, we're talking about flexible soft armor, right? Flexible soft armor. Flexible soft armor is rated to stop low-velocity projectiles, handguns, shotgun pellets, not shotgun slugs, but shotgun pellets, uh, fragmentation, and so forth. When I joined the United States Marine Corps in 1987, we had body armor. We also referred to those as flak jackets because that was the old, old school stuff. Flak jackets goes all the way back to World War II bombers when they You're were taking, taking flak. We, we got a jacket from you. Yeah, that's right. We got flak for your, you know. Um, and that armor was soft armor. It was soft Kevlar armor, and it was designed to stop fragmentation from mortars and artillery and bombs and grenades and stuff like that. It was not designed, and it never was designed to stop rifle fire because, well, here's what we knew, that two-thirds of all casualties that occurred in combat occurred from fragmentation, bombs, explosions, Artillery shells, mortars, mines, stuff like that. And they said you're more likely to be killed by mortars and artillery and bombs than you are to be killed by direct rifle fire. So they made the decision to make it soft. All right. It wasn't until the current global war on terror that our military decided to issue our troops hard armor because things changed. You know, how many artillery divisions does Al Qaeda have? Uh, uh, none? Zero? Neg negative. <laughs> How what? many squadrons of bombers does Al-Qaeda have? I'm going to go with zero. Zero, right? Um, now, they do have mortars. They do, they do use mortars, and they use IEDs and so forth. But what we found is what we were, we we're basically fighting is we we're fighting a lot of, uh, you know, dudes running around with AKs and... They, so they came up with hard armor options. Now, hard armor's always been out there, but it hasn't really been popular. It's only been in the last 20 years that hard armor has gotten popular. Now, where do the levels come from? Do you know where who it is that rates levels or makes levels or determines levels? Um, the NIJ. Yes, the NIJ, and and yeah. it, and it's not a nativity in in something nij is the national institute of justice and the nij this goes all the way back to the old school second chance body armor uh when body armor started getting popular in the 1970s and then in the 80s they said well we need to regulate it because all these companies are coming out with armor and we need to let agencies know whether or not they can trust it right we, they need to so what they decided to do 
is they came up with a regulatory commission uh, and they said, all right, if it stops X, and that would have been a fun job. I wish I could have had that job. So yeah. like back in 1982, they're like, hey, man, how are we going to rate this stuff? I'm like, we're going to send have the manufacturers send us all their vest material, and then we're going to go into the shooting lab, and we're just gonna, we're going to blast it with all kinds of different stuff all day long. I'm like, sign me up, bro. So I actually did that a uh, long time ago when I was a young young police officer. I got samples from a bunch of different companies, and and I shot it with all common handgun stuff, starting with twenty two, moving all the way up to forty four Magnum. And so the armor standard is essentially, they say, okay, if it's level 2A, which is the basic lowest ballistic, you know, bulletproof vest material, it'll stop blank, right? And then we go up to level 2, because 2A is actually weaker than 2, all right? So 2A, and then 2 is a little bit better, and then 3A 3A is still flexible armor, but 3A is the best soft armor you can get, right? The most protection from soft armor you can get. Then the next thing we've got is 3. Now, there's 3 and there's 4. Now, 3 is rated to stop rifle bullets and shotgun slugs, right? And you say, well, what's the difference between 3 and 4? Four? 4 is magnum stuff like 30-06, like 7.62 by 54, arr, the pirate cartridge. Uh, I think that the, um, like the level three, it wasn't the plus, or maybe it was the plus with AR-500, they're, they're saying it would stop six rounds of 7.62 by 51. By 51? Yeah. Okay. Not that's, 54. That's, that's, that's NATO. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, dude, I, I don't know who's standing still, allowing <laughs> six rounds to impact in their body. You know, you're going to notice when one 308 round clips you in the chest, you'll be aware of it. You're like, hey, what was that? Uh, so and so people said, well, what should we get? You know, and the, the question is, how much should I get? Well, the, the reality of the situation is the, the thicker, the, more, the better the armor, the heavier it's going to be. That's just that's just the way of the world. It's the way of the world, you know. Um, you say, well, is there light armor that will stop rifle calibers? Yes. And here's the trade-off. If it's light, and you say, well, I heard that there was uh, neutral buoyant armor that didn't sink you like steel plates. There is. And guess what? It cost double the amount and sometimes three times the amount that normal steel armor will cost. I'll give you a great example. RMA Armament Incorporated, uh, level three hard armor plates are neutrally buoyant. That means they don't float, but they also won't sink you. So it's like, you know, kind of a, a wash there. We'll stop up to multiple hits of 7.62 NATO. And it's $279 or $75 per plate. Not for a set of two, for one. You're like, yeah, but I have a front and a back. Like, I know that. So do the math. Yeah, so. I don't know if the sale's still going, but I know that Black Friday with AR500, you can get two level three plates for 90 bucks. Yep. Uh, and then they have a level three plus, not A, but plus... For 304. And some of you guys out there are like, well, my life is worth more than that, so I don't care. I'm going to spend the money. And you're like, well, RTFO, rock on. Uh, if you've got, you know, this is $304 per plate, so basically $600 per set, um, then rock on. Now, if some of you guys are out there, you're like, but I'm not just buying stuff for me. I'm buying stuff for me and my wife or me and my wife and my oldest son or me and my, you know, my two kids or whatever. Uh, if that is the, uh, the situation, you're probably like, mm, you know, I'm looking at a thousand dollars 
for ammo for armor for everybody. Oh, that's just the reality of the situation. The big question you need to ask yourself is what do you anticipate your threat being? Uh, why do police officers not wear level four plate carriers? Because the the greatest threat to the police the police officer on the street is a bad guy with a concealed handgun. That's their biggest threat. Yeah, they are killed with rifles, but if you go to the, the FBI's uniform crime stats, like a hundred times more officers are shot with handguns every year than are shot with rifles or shotguns. That's just the reality of the situation. So knowing that, rather than having cops walking around with level four armor uh, all day long, which they would hate because it's heavy and it's burdensome and it's thick and it's it's a it's a pain in the in the butt to drive a vehicle in. Um, instead of doing that, they do what? Well, they wrap their bodies in Kevlar and they're good to go, right? So what do you anticipate as your threat? Now, if you anticipate as your threat get local gangbangers that could be armed with a variety of whatever, they're going to be armed with stolen handguns, stolen shotguns, and stolen rifles. Look at your, look at, what is his name? Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff. I know it's not, I know that's not it, but that always that's always the thing I think of. Uh, who's that? Who's the guy who was trying to convince the world that every time an AR-15 bolt goes forward, it the gun fires? Oh, it was uh, Grandmaster J. Grandmaster J. Grandmaster Flash. So Grandmaster J, uh, he's got what does he have? An XM-15 bullpup? Yeah, bullpup. He's got a, it, that and, thing kicks like a bull. Yeah, that that bitch got some kick. Yep. So he's got an, an XM-15 bullpup, which actually was an AR-15 A2, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. What is reality amongst friends? Um, so all, the, all of your, your uh, the, I guess, the militant, armed militant wing of BLM, those guys are walking around with rifles. Now, generally, they're walking around with some kind of AR or some kind of AK, Will a level three hard plate stop an AK and will stop an AR? Yes. Yes, it will. Uh, and you're like, yeah, but what about green tip, man? What about green tip? What about green tip? Uh, the fact of the matter is most of the, he, where do, where does Grandmaster J and his NFAC militia commandos, where do they get their stuff? Where do they get their guns and ammo from? basically Walmart, right, uh, or something equivalent. They, they go to the local big box store, and they buy what's ever cheapest, what's ever the least expensive, right? They, they're buying Wolf 762. They're buying, we had a Federal White Box or Winchester White Box, 55-grain uh, ball, whatever. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't believe that Grandmaster Jay and his minions are running around with U.S. National Guard green tip. I mean, anything's possible, but chances are, you know, uh, pretty slim. Uh, go to a if you go to AR five hundred body armor, AR five hundred. Let's 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 talk about the difference in weight uh, between a three and a four. I think the difference in weight between a three and a four is like two pounds per plate. Jared, is that correct? Um, I'm gonna I want to speak intelligently about this, but I'm pretty sure it's like two pounds per plate difference. Uh, oh, AR, AR, and you say, why are you promoting AR500? Well, I mean, I'm familiar with the company. We've used their products, and I don't have any problem with them. So, yeah, AR500 armor. So you go to a, a level three plate. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Come on. Uh, I don't want side plates. I want armor. They're trying to sell me side plates and a hemet. Level three. And a hemet. And mm. level four. Okay. So a level three, standard level three plate is how much, Jared? How many pounds? Uh, standard level three plate. Let me go down to the specifications. Approximately 10, 10.5 pounds. All right. For a level three plate. A level four plate is approximately... Uh, specifications. Mm. Uh, this one says only seven pounds. 
No, uh, I must have clicked on yeah, a light one. Yep, yeah, you clicked on a lightweight one. Okay, so a ten a ten inch by twelve inch plate, which is standard size for an average human, is eight pounds. If you're a great big wide human and you need an eleven by fourteen plate, that's ten and a half for level three. So let's go to level cuatro. Ah, uh, here we go. See si cuatro. I'm thinking it's like twelve. No. Oh, it says light, it's only seven pounds, but it doesn't say it doesn't give a weight on the regular. Okay. So uh yeah. Although so- I think that it's uh, it says highlights, light, only seven pounds. hmm So a level four body armor. Here we go. Level four armor plate standard. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's that's the and you say, well, what's the deal with steel versus polymer? They do have a, a polymer plates or ceramic plates. Uh, and then there's this comp- new company called Shot Stop that, that's not ceramic and it's not steel. It's something completely different uh, and it's lighter. But the fact of the matter is you have to ask yourself, okay, how much weight am I willing to carry on my body? Yep. Because Oh, that's what it is. The level three is made out of the ballistic steel core and the level four is polyethylene and ceramic right so that yeah so it's a ceramic yep uh but it's but steel is a lot less ex, is a lot less expensive it's more economical right than than ceramic and polyethylene and what have you so what do you want how much are you going to spend what is your anticipated threat level and the truth is, is how much weight are you not only willing to there's a difference between willing and able. <laughs> How much weight are you able to tote around with you? You're like, well, I can tote all the weight. Well, RTFO, man. Uh, if you can tote all the weight, then then rock on. But the fact of the matter is, you got to, you know, this is when you you stand in front of the mirror or whatever, and you have that that real serious conversation with you because you say, well, I want the hardest, thickest, best plates available you're like okay great how long you been lifting yeah how long you know what physical condition are you in because you know those plates don't carry themselves right you have to put them on they do we've been through this if you have squires Mm. that's true if you have a squire then your squire can carry your armor for you but yeah so uh you know you gotta you gotta have an honest conversation with yourself you're like yeah and i want this plates i want these man and like okay but you have to wear them you have to carry them. Uh, and the first time you put on a set of heavy plates, you're like, it's only 10 pounds each, man. That's only 20 pounds. I can carry 20 pounds. All right. All right. You, you realize that's just 20 pounds in armor. That's not ammo, everything gun, else. helmet, everything else. And, you know, first aid kit, water. Um, it adds up quickly. So the truth of the matter is a, a level three hard armor plate is probably going to give get you by for 99% of the threats that you're going to encounter. Um, you're like, what about both? What about the Kevlar body armor with plates? Okay, rock on. Kevlar body armor with plates is kind of the, you know, it's kind of the the the, the A number one because you got your, your whole core wrapped in Kevlar and you have plates in the front and the back. That's awesome. It's also heavy. It's thick and it's heavy. Uh, Like I said, that's when you got to have that CTJ, man. You're like, how much am I going to carry? How much energy do I have? How much strength do I have in my body? You know, most of this stuff is being carried by 22-year-old physically, extremely physically fit 22-year-old young men. And you're 57 and you haven't been to the gym since you left high school you're going to throw 30 pounds worth of armor on your body and walk around. Mm, not just in one day. So there you go. I hope that answers your question. There's a lot of stuff available. Quite frankly, there's there is more available to the citizen today than there ever has been in the history of our world. Uh, when I was a cop, 99% of all the body armor manufacturers in the world sold only to police and government. It was LE and government contract only. You couldn't go to fill in the blank here and buy armor. They wouldn't sell it to you. 
And that is obviously that's changed tremendously. Matter of fact, there's more companies that will sell you armor than won't. Now there are there are still some companies out there uh, that have, you know, as per it's not a law. People are like it's the law. This is when you talk to like stupid Karens or Kyles, and they're like, it's against the law for citizens to own body armor. No, it's not, Kyle. Shut up. Yes, it is because Safari Land said they won't sell it. There's, there's a difference between a law and a company policy. Just because a company says we won't do it, sell it to you doesn't mean it's a law. But uh, and, and the thing is, I think, I say, great. If company X doesn't want your money, then don't give, give it, it to the other company. Give it to another company. Yeah. They're not the only ones in the world making stuff. So there you go. All right. Uh, what are we? Well, we're 25 minutes in. I'm, I am in charge of the clock today. Uh-oh, you can see it. <laughs> I am in charge of the clock. If you guys want to read the one the seventeen hundred word article, it's an extremely detailed article about body armor. Uh, the link is in today's show notes. So just open up whatever you're listening to this on and uh, click it, and boom, it'll take you straight there. All right, Duracoat. Why? Because life is too short. To have an ugly gun. That's right. It's too short to have an ugly gun. You don't want to have an ugly gun. I don't want to have an ugly gun. I don't want to have a rusty gun or a used gun that only has half of the bluing left on it or whatever. Uh, The fact of the matter is Duracoat has everything you need to completely refinish a gun, whether it's wood stocks, whether it's aluminum, whether it's steel, even polymer. Uh, And let me tell you something. You know the great thing about Magpul polymer, Jared? What's that? Duracoat sticks to it really well. Oh, yeah. Because it's not the gloss polymer. Oh, so that means that you can just do the Duracoat, and then you don't have to wait two weeks. You just go out the, just the same day, right? No, no, no. I didn't say that. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, I've uh, I've heard that from people. Yeah. Oh, it sticks It sticks much better, so you don't have to wait as long to cure. I'm like, you should probably, mm, no, you should probably just go ahead and, no. and follow the directions. Follow the directions. That's just me. Yeah. Uh Glossy, shiny, glossy polymer uh, it is really hard to get anything, any kind of coating to stick to. So they, they, But they can hook you up. They have an adhesion promoter and all that. So, But the, the fact is, is Duracoat Firearm Finishes has everything you need to refinish your gun. So stop making excuses. And you can do it in your own workshop, at your own workbench, in your garage, whatever. Uh, it just takes some time, effort, and a little bit of uh, education on your part. So check those guys out. They're good people. Crossbreed holsters. Well, crossbreed holsters, they want you to be dangerous on demand. And how do you do that? By actually carrying your gun. How do you actually carry your gun? Well, you put it in a high-quality holster, keep it attached to your body, and then you're good to go when you need it. Use the promo code, promotional code, SOTG18 when you shop at Crossbreed Holsters, and you're going to be a happy camper. Now, Brownells, we just referenced them. Brownells actually has armor in stock. And uh, I referenced that in the Body Armor article. They are working with RMA Incorporated uh, to provide you. This is something that's relatively new. Most of you guys probably are like, what? Uh, I just got a promotional email about this, what, two weeks ago? I guess it was like two weeks ago. Yeah, it was literally right as the article dropped. Yeah, it was the day we were going to release the article. We got a, a promo email from Brownell saying, hey, P.S., we have plates in stock. I'm like, what? You do what now? So, yes, if you want the uh, the RMA Armament Incorporated, uh, the uh, advanced high-tech plates, uh, you can get them directly from brownells.com. Yes, indeed. Just sign up for their newsletter, and then you'll know all the stuff that I know. <laughs> or at least most of it, or maybe even more, maybe even more, maybe even more. All right, it's Monday, and so Zach's going to play a quick uh, a video audio clip for you guys. If you're new listeners, close that hole under your nose and open up both your ears and listen louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All 
All right, now that you know what to do, we're going to go ahead and move on to the main topic of the day. Uh, there's this gentleman uh, who 60 years ago became the president of the United States. His name was John Fitzgerald Kennedy. You might have heard of him, unless you're a Gen Z, or, uh, you might not have heard of him. But John F. Kennedy gave an inaugural address on January 20th, 1916. You're like, but Kennedy was a Democrat. He was. Kennedy was a Democrat 60 years ago. The things that Kennedy said and the programs that he promoted, if he promoted those today, he would be a conservative Republican. Kennedy referenced God, not not small g, but capital G. He referenced, honored, and thanked God in his inaugural speech numerous times. I didn't count the number of times, but it was many. And he did it at the very end. Imagine, Jared, can you imagine a scumbag piece of human filth Democrat today? The only, the only reason they would do that was so they could get over on somebody or so they could trick somebody. Uh, the things that Kennedy did and the programs that he promoted and the ideas that he promoted uh, have no place in the modern Democrat Party. So I want to give you a quote, and this is from the inaugural address. It's a long address, uh, and we have, if you want to read it, and you should read it at least once in your life, we've got a direct link in the show notes. You can read the entire inaugural, inaugural address. Now, the most famous line is the ask not line, right? Mm-hmm. That's the one that's been echoed throughout time. That's the one that, that Living Color put in their cult of personality song. <laughs> yep. Cool, cool piece of trivia. Did you know that the lead singer for Living Color, the band, the rock band, was in the movie Platoon? I did not know that. Did he play a main part? Yeah, he was, uh, he was oh, I can't remember his name. He was uh, the, the black kid who was fighting in the final battle uh, with Charlie Sheen. wasn't fighting against Charlie Sheen, but he was with Charlie Sheen. And... Uh, Google it. They loaded him, both him and, and Charlie Sheen got loaded up on stretchers and taken away in the medevac helicopter at the same time. That kid, that young kid, went on to be the lead singer for the band in Living Color, or Living Color. <laughs> huh. So a piece of trivia for you there. All right. So I would have never known. Yep. Anyway, so let's get back to Kennedy's speech. Uh, this is towards the end of the speech, and this is a direct quote, so listen up. <clears throat> In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I will not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it, and the glow from that fire will truly light the world. Mm -hmm. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Is that pretty amazing? If yeah. I were to give you those that those words, if I had to say, hey, read this and tell me who said it, I I bet you half the country. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hedge that bet a little bit. I'm gonna get you seventy five percent of the country, if you're just to throw that quote out there and say who said that and under what circumstance. Ah, it sounds like something that, that some mean, evil, nasty Republican would say. Sounds like something that Reagan would say, quite frankly. No, it was John Ken- John F. Kennedy. Imagine that today. We have half of the country or a good percentage of the country that believes that the government and the state and the country owes them. They need to make everything fair for me. They need to. Anyone who who says anything I don't like or does anything I don't like, the government needs to silence them, needs to shut them down. I need a check. I need a program. I need money. I need the government to do for me. I mean, look at how Democrats run for 
office. How do they run for office? They run for office by promising to give people stuff they, and to punish other people. We're going to give you free stuff, and then we're going to punish anybody that you don't like. We're going to punish the oil companies because they're evil. Because producing gasoline and natural gas to heat your home, that's evil. You should heat your home with... How many children are there? Quite a few. Because I can hear them. I just heard them come in the door. Okay. Uh, natural gas is evil. Gasoline is evil. What are we supposed to heat our houses with in the middle of the winter? Solar panels? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Because if that was viable and that worked, everybody would do it. It's not viable and it doesn't work. When Air Force One is powered by solar panels, come talk to me. Somebody asked, they're like, so if Sniffy Joe acts, uh, steals this election and becomes the president-elect, the, the illegitimate president of the United States, is, is he going to park Air Force One because it uses fossil fuel? Because he hates fossil fuel, right? Well, no, that's not for them. That's for you. It's like all the imbecile Hollywood billionaires that, that fly – on private jets, they burn 50,000 pounds of jet fuel to transport three people to a conference to talk about global warming. Because it's not for... That's, that is the basic tenet of communism, socialism, totalitarianism, is you have a ruling class who are all better than you, and then you have you, the peasants, and you, the peasants, have to follow these rules. But we, we don't because we, we care more than you and we're smarter than you. So those rules aren't for us. Those rules aren't for us. Ladies and gentlemen, I, in the long, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say that first sentence. In the long history of the world, Kennedy's talking about like, look at world history. And of course, you know, back in the 60s, when people went to school, they actually learned about world history. We didn't waste our time on recycling programs and Earth Day and gender sensitivity training. They actually taught kids about world history. They made them read the classics and so forth. Whether they liked it or not, they learned about it. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum Danger. Can we be honest and say that he could have just described the year 2020? Would you say that freedom and liberty are both in their hour of maximum danger? He said, I will not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a, a president, instead of saying, it's not my fault, it's their fault, and it's his fault, and it's their fault, and, 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 and it's everyone's fault but mine. It's not my job. We had a, a leader, we had a president that said, no, it's right here. It's me. It's my responsibility. Not anyone else's. I will be the leader. Whew. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I'm going to say this to you guys out there listening. <sighs> The sooner that we accept the harsh reality that the greatest enemies of freedom now reside within the borders of the United States, the better capable we will be to deal with that threat. You see, when Kennedy was the president, we understood that there was a tremendous threat to individual liberty and freedom in the world, and it was communism. It was the Soviet Union 
and their and the poison uh, and the China and China, of course, uh, and the poison that communism was spreading throughout the world. And we understood that. And at the time, we understood that we needed to fight it. We understood as a country that communists are bad. And they destroy the human spirit. But today, I don't think most people feel like Russia, and Russia's not technically communist anymore, that that's not our greatest threat. The greatest threat to liberty and to freedom lives within the borders of the United States of America. Now, we can, we can continue to consume the blue pill and pretend that that's not the case or wish that it's not the case or, well, it might be the case, but if I accept that, it's going to make me mentally uncomfortable. And I don't want to be mentally uncomfortable. I want to, I want to use worthless platitudes like, well, all politicians are bad and they're all the same. There's not a nickel's difference between the two. I didn't say politicians, did I? And when Kennedy gave this speech, did he say, I call upon all politicians to defend freedom in the world? That's my best Boston Kennedy accent. No, he wasn't talking about politicians. He was talking about you. He was talking about my fellow Americans. He was talking about the people of the nation. When he said, I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. He wasn't saying, well, these people over here in the nation's capital, in the, in the state's capital, they have to protect and preserve freedom for you. No, because it's not their job, and that's not a job that they want. The job that they have is how much authority can we get how much power can we get how much money can we take from the people in order to give ourselves power that's what goes on in the capitals and if that's if you think those people go to the state capitals to provide you with freedom and liberty you are sorely mistaken and you need to come into the current world in which we live People go to Washington, D.C. to get power. That is why the left and the establishment Republicans hate Donald Trump. Because he is an impediment to their desire, their acquisition of power. Because he showed up and he wasn't part of their in-crowd clique. He didn't go to their parties. He didn't play their political power-sharing game. He showed up and he said, I'm going to be a representative of the people and I'm going to make the people's lives better. And they're like, whoa, 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 hang on a second. That's not what we do here. Like You, you don't understand, Don. We Here in D.C., that's not what we do. We don't make the people's lives better and provide them with more freedom. We do that. We take their money and we control them. That's what we do. What are you talking about? And he said, no, that's not what I'm going to do. And they said, okay, well, we're going to do everything in our power to damage, destroy, and undermine you. Because that's not what we do. Kennedy understood that. And he did not say, I call upon all politicians in America to fight for freedom. Nope. It was you and your family, and your neighbors, it's you who have the responsibility of asking what you can do for your country. Now, you, you know, I know a lot of you might be like, well, that's too much for me, and I can't be bothered with it. Okay, fine. That's great. But I would hope that in my audience, that the vast majority of my audience understands these words and understands that it's not politicians in a state capital, it's not politicians in a nation's capital, that ensure that the people of the country have freedom, that ensure that the rules are followed. You know, the rules that we laid down in 1791 and said, hey, government, 
these restrictions are for you. The Bill of Rights does not restrict the actions in the pe- of the people. The Bill of Rights restricts the actions of the government. Tells them what they are not allowed to do. And you say, yeah, but Paul, they don't. They ignore that. And they pretend that it doesn't exist, and they just do what they want anyway. Okay. And whose responsibility is it to make sure that they follow the rules? You say, well, it's theirs. No, that's like saying it's a five-year-old's responsibility to make sure the five-year-old doesn't eat all the cookies out of the tray that you left on the table. No, it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. It's my responsibility. It's our responsibility. That's why I get up every day and I come to this microphone. I know I don't come to it every day. I come to it four days a week. Is that good enough for you guys? (laughs) Uh, Now, if you said four days a week, I don't understand that. Uh, Yeah, we do Monday and Wednesday, and we do Thursday and Friday. If you want to be here Thursday and Friday, then go to getsotg.com and sign up, become part of the grad program. A lot of you have, uh, and I hope that all of you are getting what you you are paying for and uh, something that we're doing because it's wintertime and just just a different world right now. And so what I've decided to do is I've decided to open up my home, open up the encampment homestead, and do leadership programs. We're going to do a series of Patriot Fire Team leadership seminars. They're going to be a limit. There's a limited enrollment, limited number of people. And because I am opening up my personal home, not a rental facility or a lodge or a hotel, but my actual home, uh, we've made these available exclusively to members of the grad program because members of the grad program are uh, essentially part of our extended family. Yep. So if that's something you're interested in, great. If you're not, then that's great too. You know, it's your, it's your life to live. Yep. So. It's pretty, pretty righteous of you to do that. I did have somebody that wants to uh, buy two seats in the February class. Have you got dates down for that yet? Uh, no, but we can, I can have yeah. Zachary do that. So if you want to get into a February class, we can do that. Uh, do we have a question that needs to be answered? Um, most of the questions that popped up were just about the body armor, but mm-hmm. there's the article, and I think you did a pretty good job explaining all that stuff. It's a pretty detailed article. Yeah, let me pop over to the questions. I'm in the grad program questions channel here. Um, uh, the effect. Oh, we talked about the Varma ammunition already. Yep, last we time. sure did. Sure did. Sure did. All right. You know, that's it. every once in a while when you pay attention and you read stuff, you, you realize that, that many of the problems that we're encountering today are not, not the first time in the history of the world that this problem has come up. Uh, and matter of fact, if, if you immerse yourself in, in literature and in classics and in, in history, the human, human history, you'll find out that a lot of these problems have been here before. It's just how did the people deal with it? In some situations, the people didn't deal with it, and, and they fell into a state of, of utter misery uh, for generations. And then in other, uh, you know, other situations, the people did deal with it head on, and they were able to defeat it. And that's exactly where you have to be right now. You have to say, will I, will I be enslaved by lies, fraud, chicanery, will, or will I fight back? And it's completely and totally up to you. And what we're trying to do uh, with the Patriot Fire Team Leadership Seminars is actually to provide you with valuable information so that you can go back to your community, wherever it is you live, and provide a service, provide leadership to your community. His brothers and sisters, we need we do not need any more politicians in America. We need leaders. And that's what we're all about here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the cork in this one. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back on Wednesday. Wednesday, as we move into this holiday season, things are going to get a little bit funky, uh, but we're going to do the best to continuously communicate with you, despite the fact that the big tech giants don't want us to communicate with you, but we're still going to do it. Uh, and I guess the best way, Jared, what is the best way to avoid the complications of big tech? Uh, get 
bread of the internet? Well, no, no. I mean, uh, for us <laughs> to communicate with them, uh, go to Parlor, communicate with us there. Yeah. But the um, the best, the absolute one hundred percent best way is to go to studentofthegun dot com, get that seven training tips that can save your life. It's a completely free online course that Dad put together helps you master the fundamentals. If you already consider yourself a master of the fundamentals, it's a great refresher. So go through it, and then you'll be on uh, the email list, which will allow us to communicate with you and let you, let us know if, or will let us tell you if we have a new thing that pops up that we're using. If you want to watch the student of the gun videos, you can obviously go to full 30.com on there. The student of the gun channels there. And if you want to communicate with us on social media of some sort, then parlor is going to be the best way we've noticed the distribution is much better than Facebook or Instagram, yep. but we still do have the other platforms as well. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember, you are a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.